Reset 3D now includes the ability to define the plate methodology of a material as orthotropic. In structural analysis and design, it may be useful for an engineer to define plates or slabs that have different characteristics or stiffness in the longitudinal and transverse directions. Doing so will result in the plates reacting to loading differently in the different directions. This type of behavior can be useful when defining or modeling metal decks, cross-laminated timber, or even rib slabs. Before we go ahead and look at how to define this in Reset 3 d let's go ahead and look at the results for this little model here with isotropic plates. So we can see our loads. I've got some loads applied here, so just uh, 25 pounds a square foot live load here. And our plates here are isotropic, meaning that they have the same stiffness behavior in both directions. Now we would expect in this particular case, maybe in this bay framing, that we'd want the load transfer to go in this Z direction. If we go ahead and look at the shear load here though, we can see that we don't have that pure one-way action that we would expect. We're getting it in, for the most part based on the geometry, but because of the stiffness of the plates, we are getting some load um, going in directions that we don't expect. And so in order to go ahead and look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off those results and go into the materials database or the materials spreadsheet. And so here on the general tab, we can see that we have all our general materials. And under the general steel material, which is what we're using, we have the option to change the plate methodology from isotropic to orthotropic. So if I go ahead and choose orthotropic, I'll lose the results here and that's okay. And I'll go ahead and click on the ellipsis button to see the orthotropic material properties. And so the properties of the material can be adjusted as needed in order to achieve the desired plate stiffness and load distribution. The various analysis properties available have different functions. So E1 and E2 are the modulus of elasticity in the longitudinal and transverse directions, also defined as the local X or local Y direction. So here E1, the local X, E2, the local Y direction. The values of G, G1, G, G12, G13, G23 are the shear modulus. So G12 is the in-plane shear modulus, whereas G13 is the transver transverse shear modulus for the shear in the XZ plane and G23 is the transverse shear modulus for the shear in the YZ plane. Finally, this new one too is the Poisson's ratio for uniaxial loading in the X direction. So if we wanted to, we can go ahead and define these characteristics or define these properties to simulate a one-way slab. Now, before we define the plate properties for our simple kind of one-way metal deck example, there's a few things that we should know about the analysis properties. First, all values should be input as real values where necessary. Second, if no calculated value is available for G13 or G23, then we should use the value of G12. Also, if G12 and G23 are zero or left blank, then the transverse shear flexibility calculations will not be performed, and in which case, they'll be equivalent to a zero shear flexibility, which means infinite shear stiffness. And finally, when orthotropic material is used, the plate axis option found in the model settings must be set to global. So if we go ahead and into our settings here, and under axis here, we must set this plate axis orientation here to global. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select all of our plates. So the first thing we'll notice here is the thickness. This thickness is defined as the actual thickness of the metal deck in this case. So not the one and a half inch depth for the rib, the rib deck, but actually the thickness of the material. So 0 0.036. We also have the material here as that general steel material. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the ellipsis. And in this case, we want to edit or view the existing material. So our plate methodology is set as orthotropic. And so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and manipulate or change the material properties in order to simulate that one-way action. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the modulus of elasticity in the local X direction, which is this direction here, as E1, as, as the overall or as the total modulus of elasticity. So we'll keep it at that 29,000. And then I'm gonna set the modulus of elasticity in the opposite direction to nearly zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and say one to the negative seventh. Then for the values of G12, G13, and G23, I'm gonna leave the first two the same, and then I'm gonna take this value of G23, and I'm gonna go ahead and make it also one to the negative seventh. All the while, when I'm manipulating these values, I'm gonna go, I'm, we're seeing that calculated value for new two one being automatically calculated. And that's a value that's calculated by RESA based on the input of the other factors. One thing to note here is that if the local X axis of the plates are not in the direction of the desired load transfer, as they are in this case, we'll want to use the rotate axis button here to rotate the axis of those plates so that we get the proper orientation. 
So with the value set properly, I can go ahead and click OK. And then I can go ahead and solve the model here. So I'm just going to run that same batch solution. And now if I go ahead and look at our results, we can see a much different distribution. So we've got a much more regular distribution for uh, kind of one-way actions. So we can see that our shear load out here on the edge beams is about 0.3 kips. And we have 0.6 in the middle, which makes sense with equal spacing and a tributary area uh, of basically double on the edge beams. Now, one thing to notice is that the size of the mesh here used will impact the distribution of the forces. So with the connection between plates made only at the plate corners, the larger the plates, the less precise the load distribution will be as compared to pure one-way action. So we want to make sure that we use an adequate mesh size in order to achieve the desired load distribution results, while being aware that a smaller mesh size results in a larger model and therefore a longer solution time. So for more information about orthotropic plates, please review the article found in our support section of our website. And for more information about the new features in RISA 3D, please visit RISA.com.